Hello, I'm David Pawson. John 3, 16. That's the one verse that everybody, at least every Christian, knows of by heart, and they can recite it, and they can tell you the chapter and verse. Ask them to do that for many more verses, and some of them get a bit embarrassed. But everybody knows John 3, 16. But you know, whenever I mention that, when I'm speaking in church, I say, how many of you could recite John 3.16 for me? And hands go up all over. Now I say, how many of you could recite for me John 3.15, the verse in front of that? And a few hands go up. And how many of you could recite for me John 3.17? Only one or two hands go up. Because in fact, we tend to know texts rather than context. And it's context that gives any text its real meaning. And if you take a verse like John 3.16 out of its context, you will not understand its real meaning. And yet it's quoted all over the world as if it summarizes the gospel message that we have to spread around the world. For God's soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. We know it. But do we understand it? I believe it's the most misunderstood, misapplied, and misinterpreted verse in the whole New Testament. That's quite a claim, I know. But I've written this little booklet called Is John 3.16 the Gospel? To bring people up with a bit of a jerk, they quote that too freely without understanding what it really means. Let me just take one little word in that verse, the word so. It's in the wrong place in most Bibles, and it's given the wrong meaning as a result. It doesn't mean God's soul of the world, or to paraphrase it, God loved the world so much or so deeply. It doesn't mean that at all. The word so there means just so or even so. And it actually should come before the word God. For so God loved the world. For even so. For just so. Or to translate it very simply, for in this way God loved the world. In what way? Well, you can't answer that without studying the context and the verses that come immediately ahead of it. And there you find a shocking revelation that God loved his people so much that when they grumbled about the food that he gave them, he killed thousands of them. What a punishment! And yet, John 3.16 says, for so, for in the same way, in just this way, for thus God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. There's a problem for you. Well, in this little book, I deal with that problem fully and show you how logical it is and how it all fits together. But it doesn't have the same message as most people think it has. You see, there's been an overemphasis on the love of God in much Christian preaching. Neither Jesus nor the apostles ever preached publicly about the love of God. That was not their message. You check me out, go through your Bible carefully. There are only 35 verses about the love of God in your whole Bible out of 35,000 verses. That's precious little. But we've somehow blown it up and made it the whole gospel and the whole message that we've got to go around the world telling people God loves you. That's not what Jesus did, it's not what the apostles did, but it's what we do. Where did we get that idea? Well, I look at all that. I even look at the meaning of the word love when it's applied to God. In English, of course, love means so many different things to us. But in the Bible, they chose a very rare word. The word is agape in Greek, which is quite different from the love that would be between a man and a woman, 
or even the love between friends. It's not the love of attraction. It's not the love of affection. It's the love of action, of doing something about someone who needs help. That's all. And that's why Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. Who loved the man who'd fallen among thieves who'd been mugged? The answer is not the one who sympathized with him or felt sorry for him, but the one who picked him up and took him home to look after him. That's love. That's agape love. And that's the words that are used of God's love when it's used, which is really. It's a very precious pearl that shouldn't be thrown to pigs, said Jesus. It's a precious truth. God's love and only those who've been forgiven by God all their sins and been redeemed, only they appreciate the love of God, which is why every verse about the love of God in your Bible is addressed to those who've already been rescued from themselves by God. They know what God's love is because of what he's done for them. Well, all that needs to be looked at in the light of John 3.16. It's become a favorite verse, as if God always and everywhere loves everybody unconditionally. And I'm afraid that's not the truth. We need to look at it much more closely. So I've just written this book, Is John 3.16 the Gospel? So that you can look again into that verse and find much deeper truths in it than you ever saw before.